Um, what's been shocking is the statistics around um, the increased pressure on women. I mean, there's always been so much pressure on women anyway, but the increased pressure on women now that there's been lockdown, because not only now do you have to do your job, really well, um, extra well, in fact, um, you know, obviously with the lockdown, you've got to do um, education at home, look after the home as well. And obviously, quite often, you're also carers for your parents and the elderly. And so, you know, with that, um, there's just so much added pressure. So the statistics that Sabrina's talking about, um, even though they're really bad, um, from the studies that I've seen since the global lockdown has actually gotten worse. So, all for girl power, how to raise your profile. Um, everything I'm gonna be talking about today, a lot of the stuff that you know, but the point of it is actually to raise it again with you and to get you to start thinking about some of the psychology around it and getting the confidence to raise your profile. Um, but also um, just some homework. I love as a coach giving people homework because this is your opportunity for growth. So with the things that I'm talking about today, I would really like you to, instead of just taking the notes, because the session is going to be recorded, don't write copious notes. It's not going to get you anywhere. What I would rather you do is whenever I raise something, is turn around and going, okay, how does that look on on me, how might that impact me? Because I think then your takeaway will be so much greater um, from today. But anyway, thank you again for having me. Um, I'm so excited to be on this amazing platform with so many of you um, showing up. Um, as, um, as Sabrina said, I tend to work with people because I actually want people to thrive in a workplace consciously and also sustainably. Um, and I want people to be future fit, so um, ready for the future, so that you can actually work in high stress and high stakes environments, because the world's getting like that. So this is kind of all for you. So without further ado, uh, this is today's agenda. Um, I'm gonna just roll straight through that just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. And again, uh, the objective is to raise your profile, visibility and credibility at work and also externally, just in case you're looking for a new job or actually you are in your current job. But you're thinking, you know what, I, you know, somebody deserves me somewhere else if you're not happy where you are. So all of those things I'm going to briefly touch on today. So I'm going to start with a case study. Um, one of my clients, um, when she asked to see me a while back, she had been working for a company for over six years. Um, and in those six years, uh, one of them was for maternity leave. Uh, she headed up a department um, in charge of five others, all men. Um, she basically had great appraisals, great feedback, so a pretty good reputation internally and externally. And she was told that she would be promoted to, from director to executive director. Um, and this process went on for three years and her frustration was kind of very evident when she came to see me because she said, Karen, you know, I've been promised this executive directorship promotion for three years and literally nothing has happened. And when I pushed back and said, why didn't I get this promotion? Um, she was basically told, you know, the thing is, you're not really making the impact that we're expecting to see, um, you know, from a leadership perspective. Uh, we want you to do more um, and so she did more and she was just like, this is so freaking frustrating that I'm just not getting this promotion that I really, really want. And basically, so when she came to see me, she actually didn't even say any of that. What she said to me was, Karen, I was told that also when I'm presenting, I don't present particularly well. And I think maybe because of presentation skills, I'm not getting the promotions that I want. And I said to her, look, I'm not really a presentations coach, but I can really help you with some of the aspects of presentations. So why don't you just tell me what your issue is? And if I'm the right person to help you, then I can. And if I'm not, then, you know, let's move on somewhere else. And she goes, okay. So as she was telling me, the more she was telling me, the more actually it wasn't at all around presentation skills. Yes, she was nervous before she went up, but a lot of it was around her psychology and her confidence. A lot of it was around the fact that essentially she said to me, Karen, I go up there and I'm in a room full of people who have been um, private education, um, sort of privately educated. They've all been to amazing universities at like Oxford and Cambridge. They all speak with kind of Queen's English accents. And for her, she's ethnic minority. 
she was from a northern region. She is from a northern region in England. So people are very snobby about that. She went to a state school. She went to a university, but not the, the most famous. And she basically said when she went up there, she spoke like this in a presentation. And even though she was really well prepared, you know, she just didn't come across as someone that you would turn to for, you know, um, um, a, a, um, advice. Because quite frankly, if someone speaks like this, they don't sound really confident. Whereas a, a lot of the time, it wasn't about her voice. It was genuinely about the fact that she did not feel good enough. And when she got the feedback that she needed to be working harder to show leadership skills, she interpreted that as, I'm going to work longer hours doing the same thing. So she was head of a trading division. So, it, you know, a lot of it was about making money and she was making money kind of incrementally, not as much as she would have liked, but, you know, as, you know, as it was, it was fine. And she goes, and I said to her, okay, so how do you then market that to your boss that you've grown the business by X amount? And she goes, well, you know, we get weekly numbers sent in and then quarterly we have like a meeting with my CEO and, you know, we see how that goes. I said, but do you tell her anything about those numbers? I just say to her, well, you know, it's, it's good, those numbers, right? And I was like, the thing is, you're doing absolutely nothing to sell her the story of your leadership. You have to almost look at yourself as if you're a brand. You have to have a vision of yourself for the company. And essentially what that means is, you know, stop doing more of the same. Because if you're doing more of the same, essentially what you're doing is you're cementing your role of staying as a good trader, but not as a leader. You know, you're not actually showing to the world that actually you have all this potential to do some amazing, amazing things. What you're doing is doing more of the same. That's not going to get you anywhere. What they want from an executive director is what does a good leader look like? What initiatives are you taking? How are you growing that business and showing your vision for five years time? What are you doing to promote your team and making sure that they grow as well? What are you doing to market the brand that is you and your team? Oh, so you're not saying I should just work longer hours doing the same thing. No. And funnily enough, when she had this, oh my God, aha moment, within six months, she made all these changes. She networked appropriately internally. And lo and behold, she got her executive directorship within six months. Now, by the way, I would like to think all of this is obviously the magic that is Karen. And it's not. It was simply that she had a change of mindset. She had a change of beliefs that she actually was able to do all these things in spite of her, you know, her background and her state education, believing that she had something to contribute, believing in her vision. And she brought all of that very quickly into work. And honestly, within six months, she was promoted. And she was going, I just don't understand why I just kept doing the same thing and why I felt you know, I couldn't market myself. She goes, I felt like it was false advertising. I was like, there's nothing false about you. So, you know, that's just a story that hopefully some of you might relate to and think, okay, what are the things I might do to raise my visibility and profile going forward? So um, we've all seen these, some of the other com common challenges that we've faced um, where your hard work and contribution are not recognized or appreciated. And that is just really, really painful, but it happens a lot of the time. And sadly, you know, it, it doesn't seem to improve because once people have an opinion of you, it's very hard to change that. And in my particular client's um, situation, she was working hard and contributing but also not in the right way, if that makes sense. She was doing more of the same as opposed to growing into that executive directorship profile and, and you know, uh, responsibilities and roles. Sometimes you're not part of a gang or in the right group, crowd or network, which is unfortunate. So again, some of the things to think about, like how do you do that? Um, an excuse for lack of advancement is sometimes budgets, you're not the right time, someone else is more qualified, all of that, which sometimes is true, but, you know, sometimes it's not. And it's kind of worth thinking about how do I change that? Um, a really common thing, and we introduced today, as Sabrina said, is being born female, being born the wrong race, being born um, in the wrong class. And obviously, if you have, you have a disability, which is something that you 
can't help, um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do about that. Or if you have um, a different sexual preference, for example, you know, and that's holding you back, even though weirdly enough, that's none of that is relevant. It's about kind of your ability to contribute in your talent and bringing a different angle to things. Um, you know, we see common challenges of not being able to stand out because you get interrupted at workplace. Um, it happened to me when I was working financial services, um, being ignored. It was, you know, things. And the only time I wasn't ignored was when people would say to me, Karen, can you go and get some tea? Uh, how about no? Um, or being mansplained to in meetings, which has just happened all the time or you're being overlooked for projects. So those are very common challenges. I'm sure some of you guys can relate to those. So going back to, um, I'm gonna take a slight deviation tour because like I said, I love giving people homework. This is around sort of now getting you guys to start thinking about your beliefs. So in coaching and in psychology, we work a lot around um, people's thought processes and their beliefs and how that might impact their behaviors. So everybody has core beliefs. They're based around how you're brought up, how your parents have um, sort of brought you up or, or you know, in the environment if you've been brought up, your experiences around work experiences, etc. And those form your beliefs. Everybody has them. Now, the thing about beliefs is you will hold your beliefs to be true. I'm sure many of you probably haven't really thought about your beliefs, but they're the things that sort of influence your, your behaviors. Um, you will hold them to be true, but they are not actually in actual fact necessarily true. So, for example, with my particular client, she believed that she was a lesser person because she came from the wrong part of England. She was from a different ethnic minority background. She had an accent and she had a state education and she believed she wasn't good enough. The fact that she ignored all these other facts, like she was head of that department, was asked to join from a different company, which meant that people saw her talent, good enough to head a department, and the fact that she made an even bigger leap than most people because she had a state education, whereas she didn't have all the trappings of a private school education. And she went to a good, but not Oxbridge University. She made that huge leap. And guess what? She chose not to see that. Her beliefs were still keeping her in that small hole. And once we worked on her and her mindset and going, actually, you have so much to offer, her thoughts, around what she could do changed. Her feelings, instead of going, I'm not good enough and I'm scared and I'm worried, were around, yeah, actually, I'm feeling pretty optimistic. I'm feeling quite happy about how much I've achieved. And suddenly her behavior changed. Her behavior was around, oh my God, I'm gonna start a women's network to ensure that we actually elevate ourselves she started networking around the business to try and understand how the other people in the business worked because she was quite naturally shy. She thought actually the best way for me to get to know people is more on a one-on-one -on -one basis as opposed to holding more presentations and getting her name out there that way. So she made a point to every month have meetings with heads of different departments, understand their business and see how she could collaborate with them. And in doing so, they got to know her on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And she felt comfortable about that. And at the same time, she learned about them and she got her name known in that way, internally and externally. And honestly, she did this within six months. And suddenly everyone in the office, because it was a, a company that was also based in North America. So suddenly people in North America were like, oh my God, this woman is amazing. She knows so much about trading and she really helped me with my research in this area, for example. So when you're thinking about your beliefs, not all beliefs are limiting, not that the slide is saying that, but just start thinking about what you believe and how that might influence your thoughts and your feelings and therefore your behaviors. And going forward, that will help you when we're looking at particular circumstances when you see something happen that you don't like like you know what i'm just not good enough or i'm doing this presentation and everybody is going to think that i'm rubbish start thinking about why you believe that and what your thoughts are around that and start trying to change your mindset around that because as soon as you do you will see 
a domino effect of behaviors and behavior changes. So now that we've actually kind of sidestepped, I'm going to bring you back to some of the other challenges. And I would like you now to start sort of overlaying some of those thoughts around beliefs and changes in mindsets around the other causes of lack of visibility. And I have to say, you may not like this very much, but as a person, I think you as an individual are very much in charge of you and your destiny and your career. You're the one for the vision for you, not your company. Don't rely on your company or your manager. They can help you, but fundamentally, you are in charge of your life and your career. So in that sense, I believe that everybody is a leader. So what is the cause of lack of visibility? It could be your inexperience. Now, that could be a fact. You could be inexperienced, right? So think about how you might change that. Or it could be actually someone else perceives you as an inexperienced. So what can you do to change that? Underperformance. I've worked with a lot of people who are phenomenally good and they are not underperforming and possibly their manager can't see that. But I've also worked with a small minority of people who are slightly delusional, sadly, who turn around and think that they are really performing because they're very defensive. I'm turning around saying, don't be defensive. What works for you is actually promoting yourself and working extra hard and seeing how you can improve your performance to get where you want to go. A lack of curiosity. So for example, quite often people just do the work. So with my particular client, for example, she was just doing the work and she wasn't thinking, what more can I do? How can I do this differently? For three years, I didn't get a promotion. What is it about those things that she, my boss was telling me? My boss was telling me, I'm not doing things that are executive director like. And she goes, well, the thing that I do know how to do is trade. So I'm going to do even more of that and I'm going to work lo uh, longer hours. A curious person would go, huh, what else can I do? How can I do that differently? What does she mean when I say, when she says, you need more executive directorship type, um, you know, kind of behaviors? What does that mean? And if you don't know, ask. But instead, she was so scared. Again, those beliefs, oh, I need to know what that answer is. So I'm not going to ask. So do you see what I mean? It's all a bit of a vicious circle. Apathy or motivation, basically, if you're not motivated, then actually part of the question is maybe you're not in the right career or maybe you're not in the right job or maybe there's something else going on at home that's not giving you that motivation. Um, I spoke to someone very recently who said she wasn't feeling that motivated because she was burnt out. So it could be that. So explore, explore around motivation and why you're not energized, right? It could be a variety of reasons. So have a think about that. A rigid mindset. So I had a client the other day who basically it was a new client and he goes to me, you know, I'm, I'm just really annoyed with my current job. Karen, I need some help because I've been there for a long time and I'm just sort of drifting. My boss isn't supporting me. I mean, he's a nice guy, my boss, but he's not really supporting me. Um, and I think it's really unfair because I've worked really, really hard and I've got nowhere with my career. And I turned around and said, okay, that's understandable. Of course I can help you. But just let me ask you this question. What have you, you done to change that situation from where you are today? And I didn't mean that in a judgmental way because I wanted to understand like what, you know, have you had conversations? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about your underperformance, your inexperience, what your strengths are, all of that sort of stuff. And I said, so what have you done to, you know, you know, help your career? Well, you know, I've done a lot. I said, oh, okay. Tell me what you mean. Well, you know, I saw my boss and we had our appraisals. We have once a year appraisals and he goes, I'm doing fine. So, you know, I just thought I'd have a promotion by now if he says I'm doing fine. But have you told him what your aspirations are? Have you told him what you would like to do? Have you told him what courses you might like to get you to where you need to go? Have you asked him how you can support him better? Have you asked him about different projects that you can contribute to? Have you asked him about all sorts of things? No. So actually, have you actually been apathetic and also have you let yourself be seen as someone is poor me as opposed to owning your career and your visibility and your profile if that makes sense right and last but not least if you're doing more of the same again going back to my particular client she did more of the same thinking 
that actually it was going to work for her, but they weren't growth focused behaviors. Growth focus means doing not necessarily more in terms of time, but more in terms of different kind of, you know, things that actually make you stand out because a lot of people have also said to me, Karen, I didn't get a pay rise or a bonus because, you know, um, I've been working really, really hard, but have you done anything different to warrant that pay rise or that bonus to show that you've done extra? No, I've just been working really, really hard doing what I've been paid. I'm supposed to be paid to do. Well, then why do you warrant a pay rise or a promotion or a bonus? Right. So I know that sounds really, really harsh. And as a coach, I am quite nice, by the way. Um, but what I also turn around and say is you are in charge of you and your life. Right. So looking at the others, like why there are other, you know, other causes of lack of visibility. So, for example, you might have an unsupportive manager. Now, again, there are a lot of bad managers out there. One of the reasons why I'm a coach is because I actually worked out there are really a lot of poor leaders out there. They don't mean to be. They're very, very kind, nice, fun, loving people who are great accountants or great lawyers or great investment managers or great, you know, marketers. But a lot of them aren't necessarily trained to be leaders or managers, or even if they've gone through the training, being a leader is honestly an it, you know, um, an eternal growth process. And just going on one course for three months doesn't actually make you a good leader or manager. So they may not mean to be unsupportive. So from your perspective, if you're in charge of your life being the leader of your life, I would turn around and say, try and get managers who are seemingly unsupportive to actually support you by actually giving them signposts and points to help you. Um, Sometimes managers are, you know, have a lack of understanding of you and your abilities. And sometimes they are very tone deaf or blind to your abilities. But sometimes people need um, sort of signposts. So, for example, as a coach, I quite often will work with people and we talk through a problem and they tell me what's going on. I ask lots of questions. But sometimes what they need is like an example so which is why I started with a case study because sometimes I find that analogies and giving examples is quite a good way to explain certain things so maybe you know change some of the way you know you uh, interact with your managers and line managers for example uh, sometimes it's just poor communication uh, sometimes it's lack of resources there's not enough budget sometimes it's an unhealthy and toxic culture and in those circumstances I tend to say to people try your best but actually, if it really is unhealthy and toxic and it's insidious throughout the, the organization, it's probably time to leave if it doesn't work for you. Because actually what they tend to do is just drain people who are really happy and can contribute. Um, poorly structured organizations often also don't help. Um, and when I say this, quite often you have a lot of companies now that are quite flat structured. So if you're looking for a promotion, it might not happen because it's a flat structure. But that doesn't mean you can't get promoted in a different way. So not all promotions are upwards. So one of my best clients, for example, he was like, I don't even want to go up. It's just more and more, if you excuse the word, crap, of, you know, politics and all that kind of stuff. He goes, I don't want to do that. I'm just really, really good at building businesses and making money. And so actually with him, I've worked with him to grow the business horizontally and grow like the products that he offers and the services that he offers, as opposed to rising up to become CEO, because he said, I'm just not interested in that kind of stuff. So in actual fact, there are different ways to kind of work with um, structures that don't work with you. And last but not least, um, I tend to find that actually a lot of my clients, they have unsupportive family partners or family situations a lot of it isn't deliberate but some of it can be so for example one client said that actually when she had given birth her going back to work her husband was very unsupportive for example and so if she had to work late she found that actually um, he ended up being very difficult and he started arguments and he tried to undermine her by basically saying I can't get home from work because you know, you have to look after the kids. And she found that really, really difficult because then she just thought, I can't really go for promotions if I'm spending my whole life in conflict. 
Um, and like I mentioned before, sometimes if you are, especially in the lockdown, you're also educating your children at home um, and you've got parents to look after at home, especially in Asia. A lot of people, you know, uh, live at home with parents nearby and have to look after them. That can be very, very painful. And so with those sorts of situations, I think that can also stop people from, number one, uh, having the confidence to move for promotions. Um, and also sometimes they're sitting there just going, even if I have the confidence, I'm not actually motivated to go for that promotion or raise my visibility because I have unsupportive partners at home, which is quite unfortunate. Um, but we can talk about that later on in the Q&A. Um, so some tips and tools to raise your profile internally. Like the good old nag that I am, um, I'm going to turn around and say, again, let's start with working with you. You are the foundation for your career. You are the impetus for your career. Um, I read a, um, one of these sort of signs yesterday, and I think it's so right. Yes, be loyal to your company, be loyal to your team, to your bosses, all sorts of things. But fundamentally, the person that you should be most loyal and supportive to is yourself what your vision is. And I don't mean just for your career, it's whatever your vision is. If you want a career and a family life and lots of free time or whatever combination it is, have a vision for yourself and what makes that work. And as long as you stick to your values, you're not actually gonna be turning around and actually um, being mean to your company. So I do think about you know, what is important to you. And then I turn around and say, what are your strengths? How are you working with them to shine? So um, strength is something that I really, really believe in. It's part of the whole positive psychology movement. Um, I read in the statistics somewhere, um, I think it was with a company called StrengthScope. They said something like, people who work to their strengths are eight times faster and more likely to succeed than if you're working on something that, it's not like I'm asking you to ignore it, but it's something that you're not strong in. So. I will give you an example. I used to be a trader um, and I worked in a, a really large um, uh, fund management house. And it's not quite a secret, but it kind of is. I was sharing it with you. I was not the world's best trader. But interestingly enough, my clients who were the internal fund managers, they thought I was the best. I have no idea why. It's not like I said I'm the best because that's not my style. But when I actually spoke to them, to find out why they thought I was the best, because even though I really, really wasn't, they turned around and said, the thing is, Karen, what you're really good at is you keep me in touch. You talk to me, you, keep, you, know, you tell me what your strategy is for buying and selling things that I want to do. You tell me what's happening with the markets. You tell me what's happening outside. Half of them, I was giving them advice on you know, what to wear when they were going on a hot date. You know, I formed relationships with them. And what it was, was I was using my strength one of my strengths, which is a relator strength, I'm not good in big crowds, but one-on-one, -on -one, I'm quite good at listening, I'm quite good at making sure that I understand what people want and what, you know, what they really want. So take, for example, that client who said to me, I want help with presentation skills. Honestly, most of the coaching clients that I have, they turn around and say to me, I want this, and in reality, it's something else. And so by actually really listening and understanding, you, you know, you get an idea of what people want. And so for me, a lot, with a lot of my clients, we do an assessment called um, strengths and we work out what their top strengths are. And with that, I tend to find people who work to their strengths are immediately more motivated because it energizes them. And like I said, if it's eight times faster than working on something that you're not good at, why wouldn't you work to your strengths? So, you know, think about what your strengths are. What, what do you bring to the party? If you're naturally a very strategic person, use that to get, you know, kind of to raise your profile. How does that help my boss? How does that help, help my organization? If you're a board member, for example, I have a client who has one of her strengths is stra strategizing. She would basically be the person, even though she was the only female in that group in marketing, um, she basically turned around, even though she wasn't just in charge of marketing, she would sell it from the angle of marketing, but telling them, this is the strategy that I foresee going forward, and these are the hurdles. And suddenly, because she was so strategic, people started listening to her on the board. 
Whereas prior to that, when she hadn't really thought about her strategy and thought about her strengths, she just sat quietly because she thought nobody's going to listen to me because I'm the only female in the room. Right. Again, then I would turn around and say, think about what experiences and skills do you have? Like, you know, if you're really, really good at tech, um, especially in this day and age where everyone's turning into more technology and AI, start thinking about even if your company is very anti tech right now, most people are being forced to. So try and work with teams that, you know, just even go to their, their forums for their meetings, even if it's one hour a month. Invite yourself to a Zoom call and go, hey, can I join? I'm really interested in tech, but actually, even though I'm, I'm actually in the HR department or I'm in the marketing department or I'm in the sales department, I would love to hear your insights because then I can work with you to bring what we do to the tech project, for example. You know, so you can bring all of these things and, you know, and think agile-like. And just think also, instead of being defensive, what are your gaps? Rather than go, I don't have any, just go, okay, come on. I need to be grown up about this. What do I need to develop? Think about what motivates you and energizes you. Because quite frankly, if you're sitting there just going, oh, I've just got to do more of this, you know, accounting or whatever else, then turn around and go, okay, I have to do a little bit of that. But make sure it's only 20% of my day and the rest of the time do things that really energize you. Because I swear to God, you will do it faster with more enthusiasm. And actually, when, when you're doing things with enthusiasm, you will also infect other people with your energy. Do your homework. What are your limiting beliefs? What can you do to overturn them? So we've talked about that a lot, so I'm going to move on. What are you doing to take charge of your life? To me, that's the most important thing. Um, and start writing it down. Put it in a journal. Get a coach. Get a mentor. Do all of these things to take charge of your life. Right? And at work, what I would say is improve your relationship with your manager. Now, before you start eye rolling at me, some managers are very difficult, but try and go, okay, what small thing can I do that will help them? You know, even if they're difficult, you know, just try and think when I next talk to them, talk, just have a chat. I find chats are the best way to find out about people. You know, only the other day I was just asking about someone's weekend and suddenly they were telling me about, you know, how they were really tired, etc. And the conversation then moved on. Ask questions. Improve your relationship with your manager or with your team members. Ask for what you want. Learn. Always learn and be curious. Um, you know, and, you know, try and think, what else can I learn? Who can I ask? Who can I network with internally? And that's a really good thing for your learning, but also to raise your profile. It doesn't have to be just with your boss. It can be with people in different departments. Make your presence known in meetings. Prep. Always be ready for a meeting. Read the agenda. Think about what certain people you might be able to predict, what they might be able to say, or what their negative pushbacks might be. Participate. One of my clients, interestingly enough, during Zoom meetings, she said actually she prefers working from home in Zoom because the way Zoom works is if you interrupt people, it's really noticeable. And she found that actually with Zoom, she's now more able to speak and is interrupted less by all her male colleagues simply because of Zoom. So for her, she doesn't want to go back to work because actually she finds that she's being heard more at work through the Zoom calls. So again, don't sit quietly in meetings. I'm not asking you to take over the meeting, but if you have something important to say, make sure you get it said. If you get interrupted, just turn around and go, thank you so much for your contribution. Listen to what they have to say, but then bring it back to you. Again, take charge of your life. Bring it back to what you want to say. And be curious. Again, someone might interrupt you and it might be annoying, but actually also think, what are they saying that's valid? But also, what are they saying that might be voicing frustration? Because then that will help you form your next contribution to your next meeting. So again, we talked about strengths. How can they work at work? What are the gaps at work? So for example, if your company is not very really technology driven, what are your ideas around tech, for example, or marketing? Um, you know, at the moment, there's a lot of um, stuff around um, changing of industries and the importance. So a lot of it's around consumer, you know, um, online. So, you know, how does that work with you and your company? And, you know, talk to different people, uh, different people in different departments. Volunteer for projects and opportunities to showcase your talents. So we've talked around that. What else can you do 
out there aside from working within your team. Do team things, but also do things outside. Grow that way. Join groups, committees, forums, even if they're fun ones like, I don't know, knitting club or whatever, because you will meet different people at different times and they'll get to know you as a person, as opposed to, you know, that person who works in that department, I don't even know their name. Now they get to know that actually you're trying knitting, you're really terrible at it, but she's a really fun person, for example. Be a supporter and an ally to others. So if you're seeing someone who needs help, offer to help. One of my um, best allies is actually also a coach. So as a coach, I get coaching as well to make sure that I stay at the top of my level. And for her, she, I coach her and she coaches me. But the, one of the reasons why it works as well is because she wants me to be a better coach. So she makes sure she pushes me and she asks me good questions and vice versa. And whenever someone says to me, Karen, I'd love to work with a coach, but not you necessarily. I'm like, absolutely fine. I will introduce her to her because she's really, really good and her style is completely different from mine. So be an ally because the more you support people, the more all of this works. Um, and how else can you be seen formally and informally? Have a think about that. And then if you're looking externally, don't just look externally when you're about to move. I would say look externally all the time. And that's not because I'm asking you not to be loyal to, um, to your company. But what I'm turning around saying is looking externally means again learning learning about what other people who's doing something similar to you in a different industry what are they doing that's different be an ally to them you know because you can learn so much just because you are you know a board member in this company and you've got you've got partnerships so it's very hard to move there's nothing wrong with being an ally and just going, ah, oh, how do they do certain stuff? Why don't we just have coffee together? Because by the way, a relationship that you nurture today may actually be very fruitful in five years time, for example. So, you know, be really strategic about networking formally and informally. With social media, I have a lot of clients who say to me, Karen, I really hate social media and LinkedIn. You know, I'm only going to, you know, um, kind of use it when I'm about to move jobs. I don't really want to use it because my boss will see that I joined. I'm like, well, then if you do that, then of course they're going to think you're going to leave because you've been so quiet up to that point. Be part of LinkedIn, not because I think LinkedIn is so great. I'm not being paid to advertise them. But you see, in joining it and commenting, say, on, say, Half the Sky's uh, sort of um, promotions, for example, or, or commentary on the state of womenhood, you're basically meeting other people on those platforms. But at the same time, the reason why I say um, update things like your LinkedIn and your CV is because there is nothing worse than if someone looks at your LinkedIn profile and they'll see that you've been with a company for 10 years and you've had the same job and you've done no nothing to further your career. You've not done any courses. And I'm saying put any course on. You know, if you've done a gymnastics course, I mean, some people disagree with me on this because they go, it's not relevant. But I'm turning around saying, actually, it makes you a person and it makes you a human being. Do you know what I mean? And so actually comment on things that mean things to you. So, for example, I really believe in sustainability. So I follow all those sorts of groups. Right. I really, sadly, really, um, you know, love puppies and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I don't do that on LinkedIn. But on my Instagram, I like all of those things. And, you know, it makes me human. But, you know, if you want to keep it really, really professional, like I said, keep updating it. And it's a really good reminder that you should go on courses and learn, even if it's to learn how to code, even if it's to learn French or whatever else. Put it on there because guess what? The message it sends out to other people is, is that actually you're engaged in your own life, but with a greater community. But it also shows that you're engaged with learning and wanting to know more. You're not apathetic. You're motivated to do different things. And that is the difference between you and someone else who is exactly the same qualifications as you. So think about that. Join external groups, committees, and forums. Get a mentor. Your mentor could be internal or your mentor could be external. So let's just say you are um, an executive uh, board member in a company. Um, why should you need a mentor? Well, actually, you could get a younger mentor internally or externally who could teach you about tech. You could get an external mentor who has nothing to do with, say, your law firm, but actually is a really um, well-networked entrepreneurial woman in a different group. 
a mentor who is, say, a guy who has been in accounting for ages, who is a bit old school, probably doesn't like women very much, but it will be interesting to hear his perspective on why he thinks diversity isn't important, because that is learning for you. And last but not least, I do think that it's really important to volunteer for things, the causes that matter to you, uh, whether it's kind of uh, mentoring young kids, disadvantaged children, or volunteering with a, um, uh, you know, uh, an animal shelter, whatever it is. Because guess what? You get a look as to how other people live, what their challenges are. It makes you a lot more empathetic, but it also means that you can relate to people in the rest of your company better. And in doing so, it makes you a more rounded person. Now, you probably all hate me now because I've given you a lot of homework and a lot to think about. Um, but I hope that some of these things have been helpful for you guys to, uh, to think about in terms of raising your profile externally.